This is my very first pipe tobacco Yabo. You want to see who it's from? Stay tuned. Our very first pipe tobacco Yabo. And this is from Eddie Gray from the Pipe Nook. Just got this box today. And let's read the letter real quick. And of course, all the information will be down below. From the Pipe Nook, George, sorry for the makeshift letterhead. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I love this thing, man. This is awesome. It's not quite the dandy I'd like it to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Here are the blends that we've discussed. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on each of them. Keep up the good work, Eddie Gray. From the Pipe Nook. And if you want, take a screenshot of that, and I will put the link down below. And then on the back of the business card, you can take a screenshot of that as well. That's pretty cool. And this came from Florida. So we have three pipe tobaccos that came. We have a Savinelli, 140 degrees. This is a, um, uh, what is it, 150 gram? Is that correct? 200 gram can? We're not doing this tonight. We have... Peterson Nutty Cut, but tonight's review is going to be Cornell and Deal Morley's Best, and there's a reason why I ordered Morley's Best. This is a gift. This box is a gift from Eddie, and I'm doing a review, and it's not a compensated review in the sense that there was any cash it was a gift, and I'm doing a review, and I will put his link down below. So when I saw Morley's Best, and I've seen this for a long time, I was pretty interested in trying it. Now, if you know me, I'm, you know I'm well-educated, but I, I don't like to use fancy words. I mean, I can speak at a scientific symposium. But I'd rather just talk to you like I'm talking to my neighbor or having a beer with a friend at a bar. That's how I am. I know Gary Vaynerchuk with Wine Library TV. He said, concerning wine, speaking of wine, I have a little bit of Cabernet here. He said, do you ever notice when people talk about wine, they become like instant assholes? because they start talking like they're on Masterpiece Theater or something. And that drives me crazy. Well, guess what? I'm not allowing the zombie gnome into the picture here. We haven't seen the zombie gnome in a while, so he needs to be featured here prominently. And what I don't want to do is use all the fancy words to describe these particular pipe tobaccos. I want to you know, like, for instance, when people are talking about uh, cigars, coffee, wine, whiskeys, uh, pipe tobaccos, they use words like, it has nuances and notes of leather and moss and a little bit of a tannin taste that kind of comes in halfway through, and then it leaves with a... You know, and they just use these words that you would never, ever use in a million years in your everyday language. I'm not like that. And I remember Gary Vaynerchuk saying, you know, he would taste a wine and say something like, he'd smell it and say, this smells like sneakers that have been left in a locker for three weeks. You know, and he would just use everyday language without using all the fancy masterpiece theater words. So tonight, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Is we're just gonna, the Sultan is just going to be himself tonight, which I think that is what most people have come to enjoy. But Morley's Best is by Cornell and Deal. I did not read any reviews. 
I picked it because it says Morley's Best, and I, I like Christopher Morley, and we are going to do a little Christopher Morley reading at the end of this. How appropriate. Christopher Morley lived in the late uh, 1800s, and he, he died, I think, in, was it maybe the 50s or 60s? But so much of his writing was at the turn of the century, like between 1900 and 1920 were some of his greatest works. So tonight, I'm going to be trying Morley's Best in a 104-year-old Dunhill pipe. So I think this is really super appropriate for what we're doing tonight. So let's start with the opening. Okay. Now this is... Um, the date on this is 2-27-17, so February 27th of this year, and I've known people to store these and age them for many years before opening it. Um, like I said, I didn't read the reviews, so I'm, I have no reference point. The only thing that I can comment on is my initial impressions, and of course things have grown on me over the years as, I, as I've tried things, So, but initial impressions... I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's in it. As a matter of fact, let's uh, let's read this. I think it's a it's a Virginia and Burley blend with a little bit of Cyprian Latakia. Virginia is sweet. Burley is a little bit nutty. And the Cyprian Latakia is a little bit of a smoky flavor, and that would be considered what, like what many would call like a condiment. There's not a lot of it in the mixture. I can guarantee there's not a lot because it would overpower it. It just adds like a little bit of smokiness and a little bit of bite. Um, so let's just try. Now I'm going to open it up. See that? Some ribbons in there. I see the Virginias. I see the Burley. The Virginias are the more golden look. The Burleys are the more brown. And the Latakia is the darker flakes in there. And let's just get a quick little initial tin note. They call this the tin note. And usually the first thing when you have Latakia in something, that's the first thing you smell. It's smoky as in bonfire smoky. Not smoky as in like bacon and ham or smoked turkey. It's not that kind of smoky. It's not that kind of... It's almost like if there was a... You had a, a fireplace roaring last night... You go to sleep, you know, you put the screen in front of it, you go to bed. You come down the next morning, the fire is out, but there's a little bit of smell of smokiness coming from the fireplace. That's what you're getting with this, which I love. It's just, it's very rich. And there's a little tinge of sweetness that I know is coming from the Virginia. It's got nuances and notes of... No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> it's pleasant, but it's not overpowering. It's not like, it's not like a, a Balkan blend. It's not like a... Um, uh, it's not like Frog Morton on the town. This is... This would be more of a... I, would, I wouldn't quite call it an English blend. I would call it... Almost like an Americanized English blend, if that makes any sense. All right. So let's fill up the 104-year-old Dunhill with this. And this is going to be easy to fill. It's easy to grab. The moisture is just perfect. It's not goopy or sticky. So I'm just going to do a little gravity action, which just means I'm just going to 
drop it in there, tap it. So it just, so like the little ribbons just kind of like all cross and kind of fit into place. I'm not packing it down or anything like that. That's the second. There's so many different ways to fill a pipe. There's the Frank method, there's the this method, there's the swirl method. It's like whatever works for you. Probably the one method that you shouldn't use is like jamming your finger down in it. I mean, I know I know old guys who have a pouch, you know, the tobacco pouch, and they and they go in there, they scoop it up, then they just kind of push it down with their finger, but they never jam their finger in there. They always use the pad of their finger, so you're just going like this. So the pad of your finger just just goes just beyond the surface of the pipe as opposed to like because what you want is you want that airflow in there. And I want I still want there to be a draw, like you know, with a cigar, sometimes cigars are wrapped so tight that you need to put like a nail through it. I have like a little poker kind of thing that I put through to kind of create. Uh, a draw. So let's uh, cover this back up. This is Cornell and Deal Morley's Best from the Pipe Nook, and his website is uh, thepipenook.com. Okay, and I'm going to put all this stuff down below. Don't worry about it. Good prices. Uh, just a really, a really common sense. It's a common sense website, so easy to navigate. And I love the fact that he's a small business, honest, has a great use of social media. You can go to his YouTube page too, called The Pipe Nook. It's one of my favorite what I would call pipe channels. <clears throat> I'm not a pipe channel, I'm a lifestyle channel, and I cover almost every possible topic that you can that you can imagine, as you've seen. So let's fire this up here. I'm gonna be using the Toker Poker with a Bic lighter. So all the purists are gonna go nuts on me. Actually, you know what? I think I'm just gonna use the, uh, the hemp wick that's on it. Might as well, right? So, Morley's best in a 104-year-old Dunhill. They call it the charring light because the tobacco rises. Now I'm just kind of lightly tan, basically just not even pushing down. This is the 150-year-old. This is like antique night, okay? You have an antique smoking an antique using an antique. So I'm just using the weight of this 150 year old pipe organ, pipe organ. Imagine a pipe organ stop as a pipe tamper. Just using the weight of it to kind of tamp it down. I'm not jamming it down in there. And that's about the only thing that you should put in a pipe is your tamper. So let's fire this up again. using the hemp wick. Well, let me put it this way. It's mild. I can I can taste actually all three. Forget the hemp wick here. Let me just fire this up here. I can taste and smell all three: the Virginia, the Burley, and the Latakia. Although the Latakia, like I said, it's just a condiment. It's like just putting a squirt of ketchup or mustard on a hamburger or a hot dog, just a squirt. So that's what the Latakia is.
It's a manly man smoke. This is not for beginners, I don't think. I can tell already that it's going to have a, a nicotine hit, and I'm not a nicotine guy, <coughs> which means that I need to smoke this very slowly. Otherwise, I won't be able to get out of my chair. And I don't like to alter my reality <laughs> with anything. One thing we know to be true about smoking a bowl of pipe tobacco is that there's usually the top third, the middle third, and the bottom third, and they all have different properties. Usually by the time I get down to the bottom third, most of your Latakia blends do have a creamier, literally, it's like a, a creamy caramel kind of flavor that comes out in the bottom third. That's why you don't, don't huff and puff on a pipe like a damn freight train, because you're gonna burn it, you're gonna burn the tobacco too hot, and you're gonna kind of like distort the flavor of it. So sip, like little puffs. And then just don't blow it out. Like a lot of times, like cigarette smoker guys, I'm not a cigarette smoker, you know, they, they will inhale, then they blow it out. Don't do that. You can just like let it out. And sometimes it's okay just to kind of like do a, and don't like go, don't do this. Don't like blow it out like that. Just kind of like, like almost like let it just kind of come out like that. And allow some of it to kind of don't blow it so far away from your face. You want some of it to kind of come up so you can smell it because you're getting a different smell. You're tasting it in your mouth, okay? You are, you're getting some of the smoke coming up through your nostrils. There's different sensations. And of course, the weed whackers and chainsaws are all going at once. It re this reminds me of Haunted Bookshop with a little bit of Latakia. And I, I would be tempted to take some of my Haunted Bookshop and sprinkle a little bit of my blending Latakia in it and see if it tastes the same. I'm digging it. And I think after this video, I'm gonna load up another bowl and really enjoy this and just sip it. Can you hear that damn weed whacker? That's just freaking driving me nuts, holy shit. The Latakia has a, like a little bit of a pungent. I've heard some people talk about Latakia smells like rotten mushrooms, and that sounds horrible, doesn't it? Rotten mushrooms. But in a tobacco, when you kind of add that little bit of funk to it, if, if you're, let me put it this way, if you like uh, fermented foods and you like that little tiny bit of kick, that's kind of like what I'm getting a little bit in my nose, that almost like the the olfactory version of a fermentation kick, although it's not fermented like Perique is. I like it. Cornell and Deal, wonderful job. Eddie Gray from the Pipe Nook. Thank you. And in honor of Eddie Gray and the Pipe Nook, I would like, and of course, Morley's Best, I would like to read a little Christopher Morley to you. And these are selected quotes from Christopher Morley. You will see why he is one of my favorite authors when I read some of these things. And this is not a story. What this is, is just selected quotes. So enjoy. There is no mistaking a real book when one meets it. It's like falling in love. Read every day something no one else is reading. 
think every day something no one else is thinking. Do every day something no one else would be silly enough to do. It is bad for the mind to always part with unanimity. I like that. When you sell a man a book, you don't sell 12 ounces of paper and ink and glue. You sell him a new life. Love and friendship and humor and ships at sea by night. There's all heaven and earth in a book. A real book. If we discovered that we had only five minutes left to say all that we wanted to say, every telephone booth would be occupied by people calling other people to tell them that they love them. Isn't that nice? No man is lonely while eating spaghetti. It requires so much attention. <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines. Printer's ink has been running a race against gunpowder these many, many years. Ink is handicapped in a way because you can blow up a man with gunpowder in half a second, while it may take 20 years to blow him up with a book. But the gunpowder destroys itself along with its victim, while a book can keep on exploding for centuries. Powerful. That's why I love reading. One of these days I'll show you my library. The real purpose of books is to trap the mind to, into doing its own thinking. I need to say that again. The real purpose of books is to trap the mind into doing its own thinking. And then finally, this is called On the Return of a Book Lent to a Friend. I think you're going to like this. I give humble and hearty thanks for the safe return of this book, which having endured the perils of my friend's bookcase, and the bookcases of my friend's friends, now returns to me in reasonably good condition. I give humble and hearty thanks that my friend did not see fit to give this book to his infant as a plaything, nor use it as an ashtray for his burning cigar, nor as a teething ring for his mastiff. When I lent this book, I deemed it as lost. I was resigned to the bitterness of the long parting. I never thought to look upon its pages again. But now that my book is come back to me, I rejoice, and I am exceeding glad. Bring hither the fatted Morocco, and let us rebind the volume and set it on the shelf of honor. For this my book was lent, and is returned again. Presently, therefore, I may return some of the books now that I myself have borrowed. Everyone has a book that they borrowed from somebody and that they discover on a shelf five years later and you feel stupid for saying, hey, uh, I just want to return this book that I borrowed from you five years ago. <laughs> That's happened to me many times. So I just want to give a little pipe toast. Oh, it's beautiful. This is getting better. This is actually getting better. Morley's Best. You can get it at thepipenook.com. I'll put the link down below. A wonderful resource for pipes and pipe tobacco. And I would ask you to look at Eddie's channel called The Pipe Nook on YouTube. I really think that you will like it. So I want to toast Eddie Gray. And I want to toast you, and thank you for joining me tonight. <sighs> Happy smokes, everybody.